In this video, I want to make a brief introduction on how traders can identify the intention behind candlesticks as a follow-up of the last video posted on the channel that breaks down the efficient market hypothesis. In that video, we saw that the main issue with the efficient market hypothesis is that it only views the market through an objective lens. However, seeing intention behind candlesticks is all about producing different kinds of subjective analysis of the markets. Most traders do not like the idea of subjective market analysis for a few different reasons. The first reason is that no one likes to deal with risk under a subjective paradigm. That's why most traders look for that great 100% mechanical setup that will make them money consistently. Let me tell you that trying to use a mechanical setup in a complex entity like the markets is not only a contradiction, but it is also a paradox. However, that's a deeper subject for another video. For traders to reach the same level of complexity in which the markets operate, they must employ various types of subjective analytical tools. The main reason for that is because subjective analysis of financial instruments is what drives the market in the first place. Remember that two traders can look at the same market and arrive at completely different conclusions about the value of such market, even when the nominal price is exactly the same. There are different ways of reading the market subjectively and identifying the intention behind candlesticks. The first and most obvious of these ways is raw price action reading as far as candlesticks go. Here we need to make an important observation. Traders need to learn how to read candlesticks in an organic way without memorizing candlestick pattern names attached to a pre-packaged interpretation. That's like answering the right question with the wrong answers. The core of true candlestick reading dwells in the ability of a trader to roll back the chain of causality within each candle by observing the relationship between its body and tails, the relative volatility of this candlestick, the relative position of this candlestick and the candlestick quality. All these four elements are the basis that allows us to make correct contextual judgments about what candles are trying to tell us. The problem with candlestick patterns like hammers and shooting stars for example, is that they usually ignore the context in which they appear, which is something that renders them obsolete. These patterns cannot be used as triggers to open trades. They must be used to form a logically consistent story that will be supplemented with other aspects of technical analysis. The second level of subjective analysis of the market is understanding the techniques employed by the market makers in the various ways and scenarios that they might appear. This can be viewed as a type of candlestick reading that considers the intention of the crowd of retail traders against the intention of large traders in the market. Without knowing what these two types of players want and their power within the market, a trader cannot even begin to do such analysis. Part of this type of analysis also consists in trying to roll back the chain of causality that exists within each candle and that we cannot really access. That's where the subjectivity comes from in the first place. The third level of the subjective analysis of the market is a little more complicated and it involves ideas like econophysics, hidden frequency lines of the market and observing the unique way in which price behaves around such lines. Econophysics is the realm of science that deals with the intersection between economics and physics. For example, we can use Newton's laws of motion to determine the inertia of trends and future reactions of price based on past actions. We can also borrow an idea from thermodynamics to measure how volatility expands and contracts on the chart. This works along the same lines as the action and reaction principle from Newton. For example, we can calculate the future volatility expansion of price based on its past volatility contraction. The hidden frequency lines are lines that cut through price in a non-obvious way. The angle of such lines can be extremely important to calculate targets or hidden support and resistance areas that are not visible to the trader who is not aware of these concepts. All of these things are wrapped in a layer of subjectivity because eventually, we have to make judgments about the way in which price reacts when it interacts with these principles. Once again, this video is just a brief introduction to these ideas to let you know that they exist. A complete understanding of such things requires books, lectures, and courses. To put all of this in a nutshell, we have three major layers of subjective interpretation of the market. The first is the raw and contextual price action reading, which is itself divided into four different elements. The second level is the understanding of how market makers act in the market, which is tangled up in the first level of subjective analysis. 
The third and more complex level is the econophysics analysis of price action that is also wrapped around the basic fundamentals of subjective price action reading, which is always based on the attempt to roll back the chain of causality of price. This video probably raises more questions than it answers, but its purpose is only to make an introduction on these fascinating topics. Hopefully you learned something new today. Don't forget to check out our other videos, subscribe, and leave your feedback below to support the channel and help the continuous creation of good material. Thank you for watching.